Villainettes, by It's under slash Kingston, on AO3. Episode 35, Chapter 21, Distractions. Sorry, she sighed. I didn't mean to say that. I'm gonna wait in the car. She reached forward and grabbed the keys from Ochako's pocket before heading out the door. What? Ochako stood there, back still against the cold pillar, as she watched Toga walk away. Her eyes fell to the ground, and the blonde's words echoed around her head. Had she really acted that way? No, she was clear about her feelings, that she only wanted to be her friend. Had Toga misunderstood her? Ignored the blatant attempts at friendship and opted to project romantic feelings out of them. But Ochako had wanted to kiss her. Maybe it wasn't black and white, but shades of grey that were stuck in. With the world so dull, no wonder it was hard to see the truth. The hero slid and slid to the floor, resting her head on the pillar. She was ready to leave, but felt like they both needed a little space to let the air clear. Forget arguments. Just sitting there in the car together would be awkward after that. Could they work it out? Make it better? Maybe. It might be a good time to figure out what she was feeling for the blonde anyways. The pull towards her, like a magnet attached to her heart. The comfort that she got from holding her hand, and the warmth that came from leaning on her shoulder. And how she longed for the warmth now. The worded so openly and forward didn't seem merely platonic. She couldn't begin to unpack why she wanted to kiss the blonde. Well, it wasn't much of a stretch to envision why. Toga, on the other hand, sat listless on the car. She developed a habit from a rather young age, perhaps due to her less than ideal upbringings, to simply stop caring. But she cared about the hero, far more than she ever wanted to, especially after the first betrayal. Wasn't this a form of betrayal, too? She got out of the car, slamming the door a little harder than she intended to, and walked off towards the busy streets. Pedestrians were scattered about, talking to others as they made their way across the sidewalks and through the roads via crosswalks. Few cars came by. The ones that did were slow, almost lethargic, in their crawl through the populated area. It was almost 6 p.m., and most people were heading home this evening. They returned to their families or pets, their children or loveders. Then, they'd go to work the following day and repeat the cycle until they died. Took amused the idea for such a boring life. The petition probably taking its toll, on the people. She couldn't ever see herself working an actual job, or a legal one, especially not desk work. Hey, girly, said a voice as Toga strolled past the alley. The purpose of walking was to kill time, and any feelings for the hero if possible. Not to talk to a strange man who catcalled from alleys outside of the dim lighting sun. The average girl would have sped up and left. But could one consider Toga average? No. What? Why don't you come here and... Weirdo. Toga said under her breath as she entered the alley. She saw a man reach for her shoulder and grabbed his wrist, twisting it around and forcing him to sprint with it, with his arms tucked tightly behind his back and possibly almost dislocated. Toga pushed him deeper into the alley. He was dispatched quicker than he could comprehend, his body dumped beside a dumper for the rats and cats who lingered there. Toga wiped the blood from her knife onto his shirt and tucked it away again, feeling a little better now. Maybe this was the cure-all. She stepped back into the light of the sunset, which was starting to fade off into a black sky soon. The streets had clearly, miraculously cleared. The strangers left behind seemed to be window shopping or dragging their feet as they spoke to friends. With a slowly drawn-in breath and a smile that only Toga could make, she began approaching the nearest citizens. Hey, Ochako mumbled as she approached the car. It was 6.25 p.m., and she figured now was a good time to leave. She opened the door and peered inside, ready to hesitantly greet the blonde. Instead, she was met with an empty seat. Furrowing her brow and looking around, Ochako couldn't catch sight of Toga. She slumped down into the seat, a wave of relaxation setting over her. Though, 
thoughtfully, Toga didn't walk home and take the keys. Before she could think about her possible standing for very long, the hero's phone began to ring. Pulling out the boner and flipping it open, she was met with an unknown number. She only had twice as in Toga save, so she assumed it was Kirigiri or Shigaraki. Negate. Is Toga with you? Came the raspy voice from the other line. It was Shigaraki. No, why? Ochako asked curiously. A drawn out sigh. She isn't picking up her phone. I hoped it was dead, but it seems she went off on her own. Should I go get her? Ochako was panicked now. She'd rather undo the awkward ride home together than leave her by herself due to Toga's unseen mishap. No, she's an adult and could look out for herself. Why'd she leave you? Did you do something to her? There was a questioning malice in his voice, a clear threat. No, it got a little, um, awkward between us. And she said she'd go wait in the car, and when I came back, she wasn't there. I've been waiting in the car for a few- Oh, there she is. She's walking this way now. Good. Ochaka could practically see the relief through the phone when he spoke. Hand her the phone, would you? Sure, she's still a little far away. Ochako got out of the car and began walking towards the blonde. Toga gave a slight wave and tucked something into her pocket with the other hand. Shigaraki wants to talk to you. Ochako held the phone out to Toga once they were close. Damn, she grumbled, grabbing the phone. The sky was dark, and Ochako took the time to observe the stars rather than eavesdropping on the conversation. Within a minute, the street lamps kicked in and flooded the parking lot with a yellow glow. It reminded her of spending time on the rundown factory building. The hero's gaze fell back down to Toga, who was listening to the pale man speak. More accurately, her gaze fell to the blonde's clothes, which are splattered and splashed with red... which are splattered and splashed with shades of gray. I guess I know what she was doing. Ochaka was almost startled by the nonchalantness of that thought, but felt that desensitization to it was probably a good thing, more so for her sanity than her morals. Here, Toga offered her the phone back to Ochako, who grabbed it back after a moment. Are you... are you all right? Perfect! The drive home was cold and silent. Toga was behind the wheel and seemed to want to get back as fast as the car would allow her to not caring about any traffic or safety violations in the process. Ochaka only seemed to get the gravity of the situation then. How much this bothered her, affected her mentally. She supposed from the other's perspective, Ochako had hurt her. Even though to herself, the hero hadn't done anything wrong. I'm sorry, Ochako said as they got out of the parked car. The lack of lamps made it dark around the league's hideaway, though that was likely a good thing. For what? Toga didn't spare her a glance. I, um, I guess for... You guess? Toga raised an eyebrow. Let me know when you figured it out. She went inside, leaving Ochako in both the figurative and literal dark. I put it off shorter than I normally would. Um, I probably would have done a bit more. But, um, I cut it shorter than I normally would. Eight minutes, because I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I just got back from work. I was, I literally, let's just say I worked a, an eight-hour shift today. Um, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, and I need to record this video. So, I'm, I'm doing small things. Uh, sorry, Kingston. Um, just doing eight minutes on this. Uh, angsty, angst, 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 angst. Kingston, why couldn't you have given me something nice? <laughs> Why couldn't you give me something there? I'm joking. I'm joking. Lighthearted. I, I did enjoy this. I, I enjoy any type of fanfiction, okay? I voluntarily read angsty shit on the regular basis. Right now I'm rereading Before My Heart Gives Out because I'm a psycho. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, yeah. Um, I'm, I need to get this video out. I need to do this quick. Um, I also need to record some more videos to catch up more because I'm not caught up because I've used some of my days off. Uh, I've been taking breaks and stuff like that because work, it's, 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 I'm, I'm getting to a point where I'm finally, um, maybe getting into a point where it's like, okay, I think I could handle this. I think I could work and record at the same time 
in every day. Uh, maybe not as much as I used to, but definitely something. I I want to go back to past Echo when I didn't have a job and I had uh, 24 hours free. Bitch, why the fuck didn't you record daily? At the very least, six videos. I'm fucking on to you, bitch. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, no, yeah, it's it's gonna be hard. Apart from this, I need to record one more video for tomorrow so I could be one video ahead for these two series, these two slots. Uh, slots 11 a.m. and uh, 2 p.m. aka uh, before my no, uh, trying to survive and learning to love, just trying to survive and, and learning to love along the way and uh, villainous because for the uh, Dobby Laser Hawks, uh, that's already two days ahead. Uh, from the rest. I mean, I'm already like uh, two days ahead on a regular like two days ahead and then plus those other two days I, I just, I just want to get on top of things and um, Yeah, it's it's things so I, I need to record four videos today I'm gonna record four videos tomorrow if I didn't work today. I was actually I wasn't supposed to work today Today I wasn't supposed to work today. This was gonna be a longer video I thought oh, you know, I'm gonna make longer videos, right? I'm gonna start making longer videos. No, I wasn't supposed to work today I wasn't supposed to work today, but I got called in because somebody else, um, fucking didn't show up, uh, to the meetings in the morning, and the boss was like, hey, uh, yeah, no, that's not sliding. You're getting the shift, and you're getting money. Uh, I'm, I don't know. Pe people weren't rude today. People weren't rude today, so that's a good. Normally, people are, like, rude as fuck. But no, people weren't rude today. People were quite nice today. Um, I worked with a new co-worker. Uh, man's... Mans was nice. Mans was nice. I had to work with a co-worker that I didn't like as well. Uh, I, he, he, he wasn't as irritating today. He wasn't as irritating today, but the other day he was irritating as fuck. And, um, I lost seven lines. So, uh, that was like $400 down the pocket. Uh, yeah. So, I, I only made hours today, unfortunately. Um, unless, you know. The next couple days, shit picks up, but I highly fucking doubt that because I have literally just tomorrow to have pick, uh, shit picked up, and uh, that's not gonna happen. Anyways, as always, my main jobs: make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.